a group of uh, 14 high school students from around the Los Angeles area who also went through the same internship interview process as me. You know, like we had to apply, we had to interview, and we had to, you know, put ourselves up for this role. And these high schoolers did the exact same thing. So it was really cool to have this parallel of like me being a senior in college and then these students being like anywhere between 16 to 18 years old and on their high school journey, but also working at, under an internship at the Getty and also being really interested in art. And I know that whenever I first applied for the program and I saw that description, I just thought to myself, you know, like, I, I don't even know if there are 15 high schoolers that are interested in arts in Los Angeles. And then to see that, you know, these high schools were just so, so interested in the topics that we were covering and the things that we were talking about. And that just made it all the more worthwhile and inspiring for me. Um, so how the program was run was that for the first couple of weeks, we were doing a lot of facilitation. It was myself, um, my supervisor, Brittany Prieto, who I think is in this call, and Alice Dew and Darcy Beeman Black, who all work uh, with the teen programs department. And my role was just to be, um, as Brittany put it, another voice in the room and just help facilitate and help have these conversations around arts and how to hold space and hold conversation around a work of art, but more so just about how to create safe spaces for all people, whether it's like young kids, kindergartners, all the way up to high schoolers and how to have conversations around these works that are held within the Gettys collection. And so a lot of my work was working Tuesday through Thursday on Zoom um, from 10 to three with this group of students and just having these conversations. We had a lot of people come from outside of the Getty. We had presentations from people with the Hammer Museum, people with the Underground Museum. We had presentations from so many people from different departments, um, whether it was from the Getty Research Institute, whether it was from archives, from medieval works and manuscripts, from photography. We just heard from so many different people throughout the Getty. And it was really cool, not only for me, but for the students as well to be learning with them and and for them and among them. It was truly like, I saw it as a very Ignatian valued internship where I was able to be there with and for this group of students. Um, more so on like the personal work that I did, um, a lot of what I wanted to do was to incorporate a lot of the topics that I'm interested in into the conversation around the gays collection. So what the students were working on doing was working on finding pieces of art within the Gettys collection that they were drawn to and that they were really, really infatuated by. And they would learn how to sort of present these works of art to groups of K through 12 students throughout Los Angeles and have these conversations such as sort of like virtual art experiences. So along with them, I was sort of finding my own works of art that I was really drawn to so that I could present to them and have these conversations. And, um, Last spring semester, I had taken this class called US Latinx Theology, and I became really interested in the topic of uh, non-white representations and Christian imagery. And I know that whenever going to the Getty and looking at the Getty's collection, a lot of the things that stand out to me are just the immense amount of Christian imagery in the works that are there. Um, you look at like European art and Eurocentric art, and there's just so much that goes into the Christian imagery there. And so I thought that it'd be interesting if throughout my internship, I explored how the Getty shows both of these sides of overtly white and arguably racist depictions of Christian imagery, but also with somewhat non-white depictions of Christian imagery. And with that together, I sort of did a couple of lessons and presentations to this group of 14 students and guided them through these virtual art experiences of stepping into these pieces and looking at the history and the context behind them, but also how they make them feel as our group of high school students were largely a population of young students of color or students from the LGBT community. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen really quick to show a quick representation of some of my favorite pieces and the pieces that I presented a lot at the Getty. But if you start in sort of this second one from the left, the head of Christ, this is like a very perfect example of a very white centered and Eurocentric depiction of Christ. You see like the pale skinned, light brown hair, um, a little bit lighter eyes and 
some people, you know, see that this is like a very attractive image of Christ, but the truth is that not many people know what Jesus actually looked like. Um, but we know that through context that he was a Middle Eastern person and that he was most likely a person of color. Um, and then we look at this image to the right, the Holy Family, and you can see that the way that skin tone is used as a way to depict uh, sanctity and holiness. And that's this idea of someone being of lighter skin. And this is supposed to represent Mary and Jesus that because these two figures are the most holy figures in this image, they also have the lightest skin. So that's how racism and sort of colorism has been incorporated into our, in our history. And so all these pieces I found within the Gettys collection and used them to support both of these claims. So these two in the middle are really perfect examples of this overtly white Christian imagery. But then I found this piece, which is by Graciela Iturbide and one of my favorite photographers. And she's a really prominent female Mexican photographer and uses this context of Nuestra Señora de las Iguanas or Our Lady of the Iguanas, which directly parallels the different apparitions that you would hear of the Virgin Mary, such as like Our Lady of Guadalupe or Our Lady of Sorrows. But instead of depicting, you know, a white Christian figure, she depicts this woman who is an indigenous Mexican woman who lives and works and she has all these iguanas on her head that she's most likely going to sell or cook. And just that's how she's making her living. And this idea of this very strong and robust and beautiful image of a woman of color representing sort of a Marian apparition is something that I think is really important in Christian art and just in imagery in general. And then this image on the far left is actually from an Ethiopian manuscript within the Gettys collection. And it's called The Virgin and Child with Archangels. And what I found was really interesting about this image is that it directly sort of contrasts this idea of the Holy Family in here, whereas they would use skin tone and difference of shade to depict holiness and sanctity. Whereas in this image on the left, you see that everyone in this picture has the same exact skin tone. Everyone is drawn in the same style. There's not necessarily too much hierarchical scale, but yet through context and religious imagery, you know that these people are the Virgin Mary and angels because of the halos around them. And just the way the characters are drawn, it's so much more welcoming and inviting than these two figures represented in the center. And so, whenever I presented these works to our group of students at the Getty, we heard just so many different things of like words such as betrayal or just like uncomfortableness or just feeling unsafe looking at these images, but then feeling so empowered and so comfortable and so safe looking at these images of Nuestra Señora de las Iguanas or the Virgin and Child with Archangels. So I think all in all throughout my experience at the Getty working with teen programs and with student gallery guides, I learned a lot about just how much it means to engage younger people into these conversations of art and art history, and especially young people of color or just people of color in general and having these conversations and learning about rewriting art history and, and how to create those spaces for the people that aren't necessarily always included in art history. Um, and so moving forward, a lot of what I'm trying to do is this is this overall topic of non-white Christian imagery that I sort of got to explore at the Getty is the same topic that I'm trying to explore in my senior graphic design thesis, um, which is currently titled, Who Do You Say That I Am? Which is a reference to a biblical scripture. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, it was an amazing experience. I would recommend it to anyone and specifically like, young students of color if we're given this opportunity to sort of engage and to be a part of and share space in this historically overtly white institution it's all the more important that you take the chance to you know reach out and to make those connections and to apply even if you don't think you'll get it and that's sort of what I did and I'm really grateful for it it was truly such an impactful experience for me and now I know that things like art history or museum education or even museum spaces in general are where I feel drawn to and where I truly want to work. Um, moving forward as I approach, you know, my senior year and get ready to graduate, that's sort of the direction that I want to go in. And yeah, so I thank all of you for taking the time to listen and everyone who came to listen to us. And yeah, I'll pass it back to Professor Rodari.
Thank you, Jose. I, I mean, you are clearly a natural born educator, so I hope you consider going into teaching either K through 12 students or going into higher education. I know that many of you probably have comments, praise or questions for Jose and all of our other speakers, but I kindly ask that you save them until the end. Um, we will have time. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Gabby Jones. Uh, if I can figure out how to get Gabby pinned, hold on a second. This is uh, where I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> by my lack of tech, tech savvy. Um, Gabby is a senior at LMU where she is currently completing a bachelor's of fine arts in art history with a minor in studio arts, coupled with a degree in fashion marketing and visual merchandising, as well as a deep love of music. Gabby enjoys exploring the connections between fashion history, music, pop culture, and fine art. This past summer, Gabby was a member of the Getty Marrow Undergraduate Intern Program, working at the Getty's Research Institute as a curatorial department and research programs and academic outreach intern. Her internship provided her the opportunity to explore the oral histories of prominent Black artists in connection with the museum's African American Art History Initiative, as well as assist and contribute to an upcoming Getty-sponsored exhibit. Following graduation, Gabby plans to continue her studies abroad and complete a master's degree in art history, focusing specifically on Renaissance era art. Um, so Gabby, I pass the baton to you. Thank you, Professor Rodari. Um, and thank you to my classmates and peers, Gabby, Jose, and Jordan. Um, I'm happy to be here speaking with you guys today uh, and having the experience to go through the Getty internship process with all of you was really, really fun um, and enriching in terms of my summer experience. Uh, so this summer, like Professor Ward already mentioned, I had the opportunity to work with the Gettys Research Institute, uh, which is affectionately known as the GRI, and get to work in the AHI program, which is the African American Art History Initiative, which looks to um, envelop more African American artists into the Gettys archives and canon um, as Jose mentioned the Gettys collection has predominantly been a very hegemonic collection. And so it's very rare that you'll find extensive libraries of uh, artists of color and their work and their contributions to the canon at large. And so uh, he works to kind of change that and collect uh, living artist work so that there is a record that goes beyond what is written about already um, and that we can look for or back to, to for research processes and things of that nature. So this past summer, I had the opportunity to assist with a uh, exhibit that just opened at Art and Practice last month, focused on the dance choreographer, um, Blondell Cummings, who was a prominent artist working in New York in the 90s. And her work really centered on like the experience of Black womanhood and everyday life and glorifying what was ordinary. Um, and historically, her work has really been discussed with other people that she worked with, um, Bill T. Jones, um, who was another prominent Black choreographer and other um, women artists, but never specifically herself. And so the exhibit looks to center her own genius within the canon of dance history and having studied dance before, um, when we are taught the history of dance, we're taught it through the lens of artists who are largely European. So to be able to experience um, this work and look at video images, read articles and interviews, her own writings on the work that she was creating um, and her own schedules, to be able to put that against a history that has largely excluded women of color, specifically her work, was very, very nice and enriching. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just to give you guys a little uh, pointer lesson at what I was working on. So um, the focus of my internship was really just mapping the creative legacies of Black artistic practice. And so with Blondell's work, we kind of got to look at how she blended movement and cultural practices that were unique to the Black experience, um, whether it be through oral history and the oral tradition of storytelling, which is a predominantly um, heavy aspect of the African-American and African diaspora culture, um, and that things are passed down through a lineage from mother to child, father to son, 
um, in a way that is different from like physically writing things down. And it goes back to a tradition of griot st storytelling, which is predominantly a uh, traditional African practice where there's one person in a town or village that keeps all of the histories of everyone who lives there. So they keep record of the births, the deaths, uh, celebration, times of harvest, things of that nature. Um, and so it's kind of found its way from the continent itself and come to America and throughout the diaspora itself. And so this is kind of highlighted in her work as she speaks over her dance a lot, rather than having like a, a text that goes with it. So we got to explore some of the pieces that were in her uh, videotape archive, such as Sea Urchin Cycles and Chicken Soup. Um, and it allowed me to blend my dance and dance history knowledge uh, that I touched on a little bit before with the art history knowledge that I've gained while studying at LMU. Um, and I also had the opportunity to uh, offer my assistance with producing the exhibits book. And I did all of this work under professors Kristen Juarez and Rebecca Peabody, who happened to be teaching in the African American department here at LMU this semester. So it was a really lovely experience to connect with them then and be able to connect with them now. Um, as I mentioned before, Blondell worked uh, primarily in New York City, and she was an interdisciplinary artist that not only focused on dance, but as I said, speech um, and video work, which is not really highlighted when people look at what she's done and what she's contributed to the canon of dance. Um, and then going beyond that, I had the opportunity to explore the oral histories of several African American artists uh, in conjunction with Berkeley's Oral History Center, which is who the Getty partners with for this study. And one of the artists that I had the opportunity to look at was Richard Mayhew and his work with landscapes, um, which is not predominantly seen as um, a, a prominent like black artistic practice, but he like works to change that with his work. Um, and he uses them to map artistic movements and time periods throughout black culture with this work itself. So I had a very uh, fun time getting to learn and kind of develop a knowledge for myself about just how wide uh, the existence and practice of black artists are and it was a wonderful experience. Um, I would recommend to everyone to apply for this program. Like Jose said, even if you're not sure where you might find yourself within the program, the Getty is so expansive with where you can be placed. Um, and as Professor Wardari said, each of us speaking today, we're in a different branch of the Getty, um, but we all did really dynamic work. And so there's truly something for everyone there um, and having the connection with your supervisors who will ultimately become your mentors by the time the internship is over is pretty much the highlight of the work that you'll be doing. So it was a wonderful summer and thank you so much for listening. And I'm gonna pass it back to you, Professor. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, that was really wonderful. I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to expand everyone's knowledge on um, Black artists and creatives in dance history and art history. So hopefully this is just the beginning of, of your, uh, your career and your path. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to our third speaker, Gabrielle Ritter, and I'm going to... Okay, there we go. Um, Gabrielle Ritter is a senior in art history and also um, minoring in classics and archaeology. She works at the Hannon Library at the Circulation Desk, as well as the Archives and Special Collections Department, which is what inspired her to obtain an internship at the Getty Conservation Institute. At the Getty, she worked for the AATA Online, a free research database containing abstracts of literature related to the preservation and conservation of material cultural heritage. She gained skills in cataloging Database, I'm sorry, database management and scientific research. In the future, she plans to get her master's degree in library and information science and become a young adult librarian. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and, and it's on to you, Gabrielle. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here and speak with you all today. And I'm very excited to share with you all my experience at the Getty. So I am going to share my screen. Right. All 
All right, so uh, this presentation is going to be about my time working at the Getty Conservation Institute at AATA Online. And like Professor Rodari said, AATA Online is a free research database that contains abstracts of literature regarding art preservation, conservation, architectural conservation, basically conservation of all uh, types. So let's see here. So a little bit about me, um, like my introduction said, I work at the library and I was very lucky to be placed in an internship that was very specific to my interest. So AATA Online is a research, research database but it uses a lot of like library processes to input the data. So because I want to become a librarian in the future, they the the people at the Getty knew this and I was very lucky to be placed um, in this department. So at AATA, I got a lot of practice um, learning about cataloging and doing scientific research in databases and finding the scientific literature and then determining if it was right for the database. And this ATA is very important for the field of archaeology and preservation because a lot of the researchers use this database to just find information very quickly. So I definitely felt like I was making a big contribution to the field. And um, it was really important for me to feel like I was, you know, doing something that was helping you know, fellow researchers and people in the field. So I really liked that aspect of the internship. Um, another thing that was so beneficial about my internship was just working with people who um, were already professionals in the field and they had a lot of experience. So it was really nice learning from them, learning more about the library field and what it has to offer. So that was one of the most beneficial parts of the internship. More highlights of my internship. So definitely connecting with other interns and employees at the Getty was really fun. Just learning about what we were all doing. We were all in very different departments, all doing very, very different things with our internships. So it was nice to know that there are so many different paths in the art field to pursue. Um, you know, you don't only have to work in a museum, you don't only have to become a curator if you're majoring in art history, um, which is what I learned during this internship. There's just so many different paths that you don't know about. And interning at the Getty really showed me all of the different opportunities that I have in this field. Another really cool thing about the Getty internship this summer, you know, it was all virtual, unfortunately, because of COVID, but they were able to take us on a lot of field trips. And this was another big highlight of my time at the Getty. I got to visit the Getty Center, the Getty Villa, um, the El Pueblo Cultural Site, um, the Huntington Museum and Gardens. And at each place that I visited, I got to talk to um, professionals that work there and who had a lot of experience in the field. I got to talk to librarians and catalogers. Um, my supervisor was generous enough to connect me with a lot of people that worked at each of these places that had similar interests to me. So I, I got to learn about the librarian field and what I wanted to do, not just at the Getty, but also at different institutions. So I got a lot of points of view and learned a lot about just the field in general, not just at the Getty, which was also very, very beneficial. So I think that's the end of my presentation. But finally, I think if I had any advice to people who are applying for this internship, I have to agree with my other interns, you know, just, you never know, even if you're nervous for applying, you never know what will happen. I do recommend for the application process, you give your uh, personal statement to either a professor or someone you trust that can give you advice on your personal statement, uh, just so it's that it's the best it can be. Um, and yeah, overall, it was really such a good experience. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, like I said before, 
I think one of the most important parts of this internship is that you're making connections with people in your field, which is so important because a lot of the times, especially in the art field, it's who you know, and it's networking that gets you positions. So I really made sure to um, meet everyone that I could, even though it was virtual, you know, don't be afraid to ask people for coffee or to just have like a 15 minute chat on Zoom. Um, just meet everyone you can and really learn about their own career paths. I found that so beneficial um, because I really didn't know a lot about the field and about going to school for librarianship. So just talking to people and learning about their own experiences was really one of the most beneficial things I got out of this internship, as well as learning more librarian terms and more about the field and having actual practice. So yeah, thank you all for listening and I will pass it back to you, Professor Rodari. Thank you, Gabrielle. It's so great to hear that this solidified your passion for library sciences you made the connections you need and want in order to move forward um, once you leave LMU. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go on to our final speaker who is uh, Jordan White. Um, let me... Okay. So just a little bit about Jordan. Um, he, like the rest of our speakers is a senior. Um, however, Jordan is double majoring in art history and political science. He spent the past summer working a hybrid internship at the Getty Conservation Institute. For 10 weeks, he conducted interviews, field research, and online analyses for the Los Angeles African American Historic Places Initiative. More specifically, he created conservation toolkits, conducted research on historical districts, met with project partners, and created case studies to analyze previous national conservation efforts. In addition, he has ambitions to become a lawyer in the future. So various Getty staff members arranged for him um, to visit with the general counsel of the Getty and other figures who are involved with art in the art scene, law with the art scene, excuse me. These experiences along with his exposure to students who had similar interests provided for a number of unique learning opportunities. And so Jordan, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. Hello everyone, and sorry for the, the tongue twister, I guess, introduction. Um, I know it's kind of hard to pronounce the actual initiative that I worked on. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen. One second, sorry. Screen, microphone is on. Perfect, you should be sharing. Okay, um, so, I should uh, preface this by saying the reason why I decided to apply for the internship, and that was actually a Kaleido LA presentation by uh, Ms. Preciado. Uh, she gave a really informative speech that um, kind of enlightened me on the internship. And then after talking to Dr. Rodari and, and Dr. Willick, I was convinced that I wanted to partake in the internship. Um, and so a little bit about myself, as Dr. Rodari mentioned, I'm double majoring in political science and art history. Uh, with ambitions to become a lawyer. Um, I didn't know what field of law I wanted to go into until actually having the internship. And um, I'm a commuter, so I commute to school every single day. So I knew that my connection to the Getty um, was strengthened by pretty much driving through the 405 past the Getty every single day. Um, so when I did uh, get the call that I got the internship, um, I pretty much hit the ground running on the uh, Los Angeles African American Historic Places Initiative, uh, which works to um, find architectural sites and art within architectural sites and preserve them. Um, so I hit the ground running and I started working on three assignments, which I'll briefly go over. Uh, the first assignment was a conservation toolkit uh, in which I had to analyze organization databases. So conservation organizations, uh, both nationally and international, uh, internationally. Uh, so I had to go through those databases and um, go through their specific toolkits and find uh, different tools that I could categorize within four tool typologies, which were consultation, uh, community consultation and engagement, planning and knowledge, uh, financial tools, and then regulatory tools. So the finished toolkit, um, I kind of put two photos of it. Uh, 
pretty much look like that and it explained what the tools are used for and which organizations use those. And then moving on, um, I focused on an HCM form, which is pretty much a form you have to submit to a, a historical heritage commission um, in which the public is allowed to cooperate with the heritage commission to uh, really like rally and advocate for a site that might be important to them. And then as well, the opposition would be, let's say a representation like lawyers for people who actually own sites and want to make changes to historical monuments or places that may, de may be deemed historical monuments. And so I made um, a, a kind of like a presentation for that and got to go visit this house of Norman O. Houston, uh, who is a very prominent figure because he was uh, the first person in the Adams Normandy area to uh, own a house there. And he actually was one of the founders and uh, key people who worked at uh, Golden State Mutual, which was an insurance uh, company that was one of the first companies to provide uh, life insurance to uh, Black people during the time in California and also on the West Coast. So I created this form and on the right hand side, you'll see I actually got to go to the building and do kind of uh, an architectural analysis because that's what it requires. Uh, and then as well, I had to present uh, a context study on that. So the final project was a case study in which I studied Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, I got around to also studying San Francisco, but I didn't get to do uh, an in-depth analysis on San Francisco. So I mainly focused on Madison, Wisconsin because my supervisors were from there, uh, or one of them was. And so uh, I pretty much studied their role in conservation and what they've done that's kind of stood out. So different techniques that they've done to preserve different uh, areas of Madison and how they've been having round table talks with the communities, different things like that. And uh, I also lastly wanted to highlight some of the trips, uh, as Gabrielle discussed. Um, I just really enjoyed having trips like the El Pueblo trip, which Edgar Garcia organized. Um, he's been known to work with the mayor, and he's just a really great resource to talk to. And I, I was always in touch with them afterwards. So that was really great. And we got access to a mural that uh, most people don't get access to, which was the Securos mural. And then um, my trip to the Getty Center in Villa which were very informative. And I got to go see the Getty Bronze, which was something that I was interested in because um, there's an issue with that statue in particular being found uh, in international waters. So it's kind of raw, uh, law related. Um, and I just wanted to touch upon future plans and my supervisors. So my supervisors were a really great resource for me. Um, I had uh, Ms. Lardenois, uh, Ostergren and Manning. Um, Manning, I guess I'll start with her, was a uh, administrative kind of program specialist. So she pretty much touched on all the projects at the Getty and she helped organize everything. So that would include um, advising people on trips and, and planning. And um, she also was a supervisor to those actual planners. So people who would make sure the logistics are settled. Uh, so that was really great to have her as a resource. And then Gail Ostergren. She was really great because she's based in LA and she works with uh, Docomo, which focuses on modern, uh, modern architecture. And she actually got her degree or PhD uh, late. So she was an inspiration for me to take a gap year, which I'll discuss my future plans. And um, Sarah Lardenois, she's a great resource as well because she worked internationally. Uh, she uh, graduated with an architecture degree from Notre Dame and she's just amazing. She worked at uh, the Pyramids of Luxor and Peru on seismic projects and all types of different places. So as you can imagine having these resources and then also the interns who are here um, as a resource as well and, and just all the other interns was a, a great opportunity and it inspired me to continue my path in law. Um, and it also inspired me to keep in touch with everyone. So we have a group chat that's going, that's just really amazing. And uh, it really kind of helped me hone down what field of law I want to go into. So specifically land use. And um, I might also want to focus on trademark law, but I do know that I want to work in house for uh, whether it's a university or even a museum um, with a focus on art. So that would entail uh, pretty much working on all types of law because working in a museum doesn't require just one field of law. So um, when I went, met with the general uh, counsel, Stephen Clark, he kind of 
uh, uh, he kind of helped me figure out what I wanted to do in terms of uh, law and how it could relate to museums. So I wanted to give a special thanks to, to everybody who helped me out. And um, I really appreciate it. It was a great opportunity. If anyone has any questions or would like to contact me in the future about um, the internship or the application process, please feel free to, to let me know. And I'd be more than happy to get in contact with you and let you know um, some tips about the application process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan. I'm so glad you had this opportunity to learn more about your own city, um, but also uh, that it, just like Gabrielle, helped to solidify your interest in, in law and that you're making really important professional collect, uh, connections as well. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spotlight all of the speakers and I'm gonna open up the, um, the chat for anyone who has questions. Uh, for our speakers. Uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for questions to be populated, I would love for the four of you to, you know, if you have questions for each other, or if you have um, any very like specific advice on perhaps the application process, you know, it seems like the personal statement is really important. So it'd be great to hear your, um, your voices on that while we wait to hear uh, for questions from the audience. Uh, I guess as far as advice goes for the interviews, because there are a lot of interviews that are about 30 minutes to an hour long, and then also the personal statements. Um, it sounds kind of cliche or cheesy, but just staying true to who you are and yourself and explaining why your interest or why you're interested in the Getty and, and art as a whole and, and what you really bring to um, the internship. I think that's the most important part. Um, they renamed the internship after uh, uh, Ms. Merrow. So I think that's really the quality that they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who's ambitious, willing to kind of network and take on uh, Merrow's vision of interacting with other interns um, and just embracing artwork as a whole throughout LA. So uh, like I said before, I, I think it just comes down to being yourself and really trying to express why you think you deserve the internship. I think what helped me, or I guess my piece of advice would be if you're interested in the art or you know something adjacent to the arts, definitely try to either volunteer or get some some sort of work in, you know, that field prior to applying to the internship or doing the internship if you can. I know a big reason why I was hired at AATA was because I had a lot of experience in. Uh, working in a library and I knew some of like the library vocab so that's why they hired me because I I guess I wouldn't have to be like trained as much um, but just like Jordan said it also really shows your ambition and that you're serious about being in the field so that would be my one of my big recommendations and then like I said before the personal statement part of your application is a, an important part so just getting a trusted advisor or professor to read that through for you and to help you with that was definitely something that was really beneficial for me. Yeah, if I could add on to that, I would say that, um, you know, just push yourself and, and step out of your comfort zone too, because I know like I, my major is graphic design, but I knew that I wanted to try something different just because we were, kind of still stuck in that virtual world because of COVID. And I knew that I didn't want to be just doing graphic design work for the whole summer. And then I, I know that I wanted to start branching out and looking at other things. So I still applied to like a communications internship that would still entail graphic design, but I also applied to the curatorial internship and to this specific one that I ended up getting. And the educational one was the one that was the most out of my comfort zone. But whenever I did my interview is one that I felt the most comfortable with. And I think that my supervisors also understood that the benefit of coming from outside of that field and from having that different perspective of someone who just wants to learn. And that was probably what helped me the most in this internship was knowing that it was so like out of my element that I was just willing to jump into the deep end of the pool, you know, and just kind of learn how to swim and, and learn what it was like. And now 
it's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And I would also say that um, the MUI program also extends to a bunch of other um, different museums across Los Angeles, not just the Getty, but the way that it's set up is that the Getty application opens first and you do all of your interviews and you'll hear back from the Getty mainly before the other applications for any of the other museums open as well. So I would say to like, go for it and apply for the Getty because that application opens first, but then also don't shy away from applying to any of the other internships that you can get at other amazing, um, amazing other uh, institutions across Los Angeles um, because it's still funded by the Getty and it's still an incredible internship that you can get paid for. And just to, I guess, co-sign what everyone else already said, um, I think when it comes to the personal statement, definitely make sure you have someone that you trust and who knows you and your interests. Go ahead and like look at what you're writing, um, but also don't be afraid to speak about your passions in your personal statement because that is what sets you apart. Um, a lot of basically the entire pool who is applying for this internship, all are passionate about art. So I think it's really um, a highlight to show what sets you apart from everyone else who's applying. Um, also in your interviews, don't be afraid to do that as well. It's not really about what they wanna hear, but they wanna get to know who you are as a person. Um, I know for myself, in my personal statement, I didn't mention my dance background, but in my interview, it just happened to come up and then I was paired with a project that focused on a dance choreographer. So it worked out pretty well in terms of interest that I already had and information that I already knew about. Um, so I would definitely make sure to just let your personality come through a bit in the most um, appropriate <laughs> uh, way possible. And don't be afraid to, to highlight who you really are outside of your academic life too. We actually have a question coming from the chat, um, but before I read that out loud to you guys, I just want to remind any seniors who are um, in this Zoom thinking that maybe it's too late for you to apply. It isn't. You can apply in your senior year as well. So the question is coming from um, Roxana Bocanegra. Um, what if you know that the arts is your passion, but don't know how to approach something you really don't know anything about, which is the Getty internship? How would you, how would you answer the question? Why do you deserve the internship? I don't know if anyone wants to take a stab at this first, but I'll just jump up there um, and say that the. Getting Maryland undergraduate intern program is focused on allowing those who have typically been outside of the institution of art to come in and see what goes on beyond the curtain. And I think that alone allows you to be deserving of an opportunity to see something that hasn't generally been accessible to the public. Um, and so if you already have a passion that you know that you can write about or speak about, being able to also touch on the fact that, you know, there hasn't necessarily always been a space that has felt safe or accessible for you to learn more, but this opportunity would give you the opportunity, this opportunity would give you the opportunity to do so. Um, I think that would also be a good way at approaching that. Um, to add on to that, I think that really the whole definition or intention of internships is to explore something that you don't really know that much about. And I know that for me, just kind of like I said, I didn't want to get an internship in something that I already am focusing on, such as graphic design. I wanted to get an internship in something that was completely different. That way I got a better sense of what it would be like to work in that field that I'm somewhat interested in. Um, yeah, so I'd say like in terms of that, that first part of the question, because I think Gabby really answered the second part of like, why do you deserve the internship pretty well? But I think that whenever you want to approach something that you don't know about, that's like what an internship is for. And so I think it's, shouldn't really be any more or less intimidating just the name that's attached to it of the Getty. It's just a great opportunity to get experience in something that you don't know about. Um, 
While we wait for some additional questions, do you guys have any questions for each other? It seems so rare that we're in a space together these days. Um, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to say, Jose, I'm very excited to see your senior project because um, the title alone is amazing and I get the reference and I thought that was very genius of you. Um, so I look forward to that. Thank you, Gabby. And if I can add on to that, I really appreciated the Blondell Cummings exhibition because we got to go for our class because uh, Gabby Jones and I are both in the same African-American art history class and we got to go and see the exhibition that Gabby worked on in person and it was truly incredible and I really loved it and appreciated it. Thank you. I'd, all, I'd also like to add that in just hearing all of your different experiences it seems like you know not only did you get professional experience but you were also all exposed to arts and artists and other creatives that don't normally get taught not only at LMU but within the art academy in general so in this way this is a really expansive sort of opportunity for you um, you know as much as I wish that LMU could provide a much broader art history um, sometimes we are limited because we have such a small you know there's only four of us that teach and we have a very specific um, very specific fields of research, but um, I'm so delighted that you were able to learn more about architectural history, dance history, um, you know, the collections of the Getty in the context of, you know, Black artists in the context of Latinx artists. So, um, you know, that's, I feel like it, in that way, it really provided um, you guys the richness that you deserve in your education. Um, I'd love to hear some other, yes, Jose. If I could add on to that, just a yeah. quick shameless plug. Um, the LeBan Art Gallery on our campus is currently having an exhibition with an amazing BIPOC artist named June Edmonds. And um, we are slowly trying to open up to get visitors from outside of campus to come and visit on the weekends. But I just think it's an amazing show. I'll put the link in the chat, but it's a great opportunity for LMU students to take advantage of this space that we have on campus that allows and welcomes professional artists from outside of LMU to come and exhibit their work and specifically artists of color. And yeah, this show goes on through December 11th and you can find the hours and the information for the show in that link. And I encourage everyone to come and visit. You're a great communications manager, Jose. <laughs> Well, if there are not any other questions, I don't want to keep everyone on a Friday. I want to thank everyone who's here. I saw some parents. I'm so glad to see you here. Um, I'm sure you're proud of your children. We are so proud of them as well. They are exceptional students, exceptional people, and we are so proud of all of them. Um, so thank you, Jordan, Gabrielle, Jose, and um, Gabby. Uh, we look forward to hearing about all the amazing things that you guys will be doing in the coming years. You're the future of the field of art and art history, quite frankly. Um, so congratulations and thank you so much for your time.